Hey everybody, it's Tom Cherry Holmes here with the FujiNet project, and I'm going to try to explain FujiNet in approximately 15 minutes. This is FujiNet, a revolutionary new piece of hardware for your Atari 8-bit systems that provides a whole host of virtual devices, some of them you already have, and hopefully a couple of new ones. Firstly, it provides a virtual disk emulation that allows you to read and write disk images both from the local SD card slot and over the network to either local or remote resources. It also provides a virtual printer emulating a variety of Atari, Epson, and OkiData printers as well as a few specialty ones, rendering the results in PDF format for easy retrieval by a modern PC to print onto a modern printer. It also provides a Wi-Fi modem attached to a virtual Atari 850 RS-232 interface, complete with driver handler polling support. So existing Atari communications programs just work. So you can use it to call BBSs, and if you want to, you can set up a BBS with it. It also finally provides a network device, which allows an Atari to natively communicate with TCP and UDP sockets directly using standard Atari I.O. idioms, but also providing varying degrees of pro protocol offloading for protocols like HTTP and encrypted protocols like HTTPS, and when combined with uh, JSON and XML parsers that are also on the FujiNet allows the Atari to, for the first time in history, become a first-class internet citizen. But first and foremost, I think most of you would be most interested in the disk emulation. It has the most out-of-box potential, and we have spent an awful lot of time trying to make sure that it works as smoothly as possible. When you first plug in a FujiNet and turn on your Atari, it will load a configuration program into memory, which, after specifying your network and any keys required to access your network, it will present you a screen where the top portion shows you a list of hosts that you can potentially connect to, and the bottom provides the list of drive slots that you want to take any disk images that you get from these hosts to put into various drive slots to use with your Atari. We're going to go to slot number five here. We're going to pick a copy of Jumpman from the games folder on this server, and we're going to boot it in drive one. We hold down the option key, and what is literally going to happen is the game is going to be streamed directly from the Google Cloud, roughly 2,000 miles away onto the Atari, and the Atari is none the wiser. As you can see, it just works. In addition to ATR disk formats, ATX is also supported. ATX has the advantage of being able to encode copy protection schemes. When ATX files are selected, the FujiNet will actually transfer the entire ATX image over the network onto the FujiNet's memory so that it can not only accurately represent the copy protection, but it can also make sure that the timing of each sector as it's read off the virtual drive happens correctly. As you can see, the copy protection just works. complete with the custom loader. In addition, binary load files in XEX format are also supported. I'll load a copy of Canyon Climber from Homesoft. 
When selected and mounted, the FujiNet will dynamically create a boot disk around the binary load file. Virtual printer emulation provides an emulation of almost a dozen different printer types rendering out to PDF to print on a modern PC with a modern printer. For this test, we'll actually take and load a copy of MyDOS to set a couple of things before we actually go into, say, Atari Writer, for example. We will take and load a document from a web server directly into Atari Writer. First, we set the network prefix. point to our web server. And then we go into Atari Writer. We go into Atari Writer. And we load the document from the web server. As you can see, completely transparent. This is a rather large document, but we're only really interested in the first page, so we'll just print the first page. Since I have my web admin set up for an Atari 1027 printer on the FujiNet, we'll select number four. We won't print the whole document, just the first page. And one copy. And we see right here that Atari Writer is sending the data to the FujiNet, and the FujiNet is creating a PDF on the fly, which we can then pick up in the web admin window. We'll go ahead and do that now. Apologies, I'm doing like five things at once. <laughs> and we'll go ahead, click on the printer icon, and what winds, what hap what comes out, something very much like this. Since this is the 1027 output, we get nice letter quality output with fonts matching the original printer. Since we have Epson printer compatibility, programs like Print Shop also work extremely well. And once we print, we get this output. And I think the results pretty much speak for themselves. What do you think? The modem emulation provides a complete Wi-Fi modem and Atari 850 interface to allow existing communications programs to be used to dial BBSs and even for you to be able to load a BBS and answer calls from the internet. Here we've loaded a copy of Bob Term and set it at 9600 baud. We'll use it to dial into a BBS. As you can see, just works. We'll go ahead and hang up here. And we'll do one more feature with the modem. You can not only originate connections, you can also specify to answer for them, to listen for them, using the AT port command. In this case, we're going to listen for connections on port 6502, 
and I'm going to use Netcat over here on my PC to connect to it. Once we do, we see that a ring happens, and we can answer. And as you can see, nice and easy. This will allow you to run a copy of BBS Express, Forum XE, whatever you want to run in its existing form on your Atari. We'll go ahead and drop the connection. As stated before, the end device opens up a whole new world of possibilities by giving the Atari access to many different network adapter functions, such as the ability to open TCP and UDP sockets and to communicate in a very offloaded and abstract manner with various network protocols. This allows a great deal of transparency, especially when paired with the Atari operating system. We've loaded a handler, which gives us access to an end device. And I'm going to use it here to load a file, a basic program, off of a web server. As you can see here, it just works. Not only can I take and load those files, but since I also have WebDave support built into the FujiNet, and I happen to have write access on my web server, I can also write files back to the web servers. All of this happens transparently. But the transparency can actually go even further. We can, for example, set a network prefix for an FTP server. You'll see that this is a very large path, and I would rather not type that over and over every time. So I want N colon to refer to that entire path. I use NCD to set the path, and now, whenever I do an N colon, it's actually contacting the FTP server and will give us back a directory. And we'll take and copy something off of that FTP server onto a disk here. And you can see it just works. I happen to know that there is frog execute in that folder as well. And it takes care of all of the process of negotiating with the FTP server, logging in, changing to the correct directory, appro appropriating the correct file type, and doing all of the data transfer. This happens automatically without any intervention from the Atari whatsoever. So we can see, boom, there we go. Oh, with that, we can go even further. And this time we're gonna take and go into DOS for just a moment. and load a particular disk image. Now I'm using a utility that provides a function that's already in config, but outside of config, so that I can use it from inside my DOS. And I'm mounting a disk image to drive two, which contains a dumb terminal program, essentially an implementation of something like Telnet, but done in about 10 lines of basic. We load it up and we have a look. And this is all you really need to make a raw terminal client.
I'm going to make one small change here to change the line endings to CRLF. And since we've been using network prefixes, you'll notice that the same device specs that I was using for HTTP and whatnot are also being used to initiate TCP connection. But there's already a network prefix in effect that I need to get rid of because I explicitly set one within CD. I just clear it. And once I clear it, you'll see that the behavior that you saw with the Wi-Fi modem is now happening with the end device here, except we're dealing in terms of packets now. It just works. Not only that, but I can take and change one thing, just the file that I'm opening, to a totally different protocol, and none of the rest of the program will have to change. And that is the power of the end device, right there, in a nutshell. I would like to thank you all for being patient for the last year, watching the development of FoodNet. It has been a fun ride. Hello to everyone attending VCF East 2020. That is all for this video. As always, have fun.